Well, howdy there, internet people. It's Rhea again. And where have I heard that before? Well, anyway, this is Rhea and to RJ. And today we're going to talk about how do I find the best band and when to make HF contacts with a specific part of the world. Now, this is something that I saw on social media and I've kind of like figured, you know what, let me do a video about it. I did cover this in a live stream sometime past, but I think it deserves repeating. So long story short, in the old days, how did they do it? Well, the magazines like CQ Magazine, 73, um, I believe QST as well, used to publish propagation reports and propagation charts. And a QST, I know, kind of, um, they, they kind of discontinued that both on the website and probably in print. I haven't seen them in CQ in a long time. Just because so much has advanced in terms of computer propagation and modeling and such that it's no longer really necessary. But where did they get this data? Well, you know, there's, there's been a lot of propagation studies and people generally, we've learned how the bands operate at different parts of the cycle, the solar cycle 25 we're in right now. But back then, you know, it was different parts of the solar cycle. So we get a rough idea. First, let me give you some general guidelines and I'll give you a very cool specific method to do point to point predictions. So generally I found for me here on the East Coast, um, it's always open to Europe, right? And you'll find that 20 meters and up is good during the daylight, okay? And at night you'll find that 40 meters and below tends to do better. Now 30 meters tends to do better both in the daytime and a little later in the evening. The bands from 15 meters and up tend to really only work well when we have sunspots. So this means later on in the solar cycle, like right now. Right now we're actually seeing a fair bit of activity on 10 and 15. And of course 12 and 17, which are the warp bands. By the way, if you are using different modes, single sideband is going to be a lot harder to use than CW in terms of getting long distance contacts, but FT8 tends to give you the most bang for your buck in terms of it's a fast mode that allows you to work weak signals. Okay. And weak signals generally mean that you should only run low power on most bands. So anyway, let's get into it. So this is a program. This is a website called VOA cap. And if the, the name VOA sounds familiar, it's because VOA is the Voice of America. And the Voice of America is the United States government-owned international broadcaster. Of course, they do a lot less shortwave broadcasting now than they did back in the day, but they've had some pretty extensive infrastructure for shortwave broadcasting. As such, they actually developed software from the NTIA, the National Telecommunications Information Administration, which actually handles frequencies for the government. Now the FCC doesn't handle frequencies for the government. The NTIA does. And um, the Voice of America was the beneficiary of that, right? So Jerry, um, I don't know how to pronounce his name, Perkiomaki 086BG, OG6G developed this website. And of course, since the VOA is government run, everything that they publish is in the public domain. Oh yes, every work of the federal government produced by a government, a federal or produced by a federal government employee, while in the usual course of their duties, not their private personal life, is in the public domain. So this means things like, you know, papers that the government writes, um, photographs that they take, all that's public domain, okay? And all, all this useful study data. So here you see on this website, they have a number of different options. They have point-to-point -point predictions, which will give you like a, uh, you know, when is best to work. You have coverage area maps for HF and 11 meters if you're into that stuff, okay? They have propagation planners, which similarly represent what you used to see in the magazine. Then you have DX charts, which give you the best predictions of when to work a particular DX station or DX position, right? And of course they have a gray line map, 
here, which will show you where the gray line is. And I'll explain what the gray line is. Now the gray line basically is the, when you have sunset and sunrise, where the layers in the ionosphere begin to go in that weird state of change, where they're changing a bit. And you'll find that, that they retain some of the best properties of daytime and nighttime propagation, which enables you to work really far stations, probably for like a half an hour, you know, before sunset and a half an hour after sunset and during that whole time and, you know, and sunrise too, you can actually work uh, a lot of stations. I worked a lot of stations through that. So let's go into point to point predictions here, right? And I love my iPad. Okay. So it, you can use your current location here. Okay. I am in, uh, right now I'm in grid FN20. Okay. I mean, my home grid is FN21 and it tells you Latin long and set your receive QTH. So let's say we're trying to work. Um, let's choose an easy one. Let's say we're trying to work, uh, England. Okay. Cause I have friends in, in England and then I say golf. Let's say I'm working friends in London. Okay. And then I set that right. And then it will, um, I could get band by band, best frequency. So let's do a band by band and shows you the best bands, right? It computes. And here you see, like you have a whole bunch of frequency. You have a whole bunch of band charts. Now you notice during, and the times in UTC here, you have from zero one UTC all the way up to 2400 UTC, which is basically midnight to midnight. So you have the lower bands, 80, 60, 40, 30, and you have a little bit of 20 from 0, 100. And then you go along here and then you go like 8, 0, 8, 0, 9. Um, 20 starts to pick up around 0, 900, which is about, I would say, uh, 5 o'clock a.m. here. And it, then it goes up significantly. And then you notice that throughout the day here, um, the best times to work are really like around 1400 UTC and then, but you have a really wide expanse of time here between like 12, 13, 14 to 1800 and then it starts to drop off. You notice the higher bands now are getting active like 15. Okay. And then 12 might peak out a little bit. Of course, it, it doesn't really tell you about 10 meters because 10 meters is so unpredictable. That'll happen in the later part of the cycle. This is short path. So basically you have two paths for the radio wave. You have where you go the short path going across the Earth's curvature, or you beam the other direction and it goes all the way around the Earth the other direction. That's long path. See, long path's a little more sparse, but long path could be more diff be better for some stations that are difficult, especially um, far away places. You have the reliability, right? of the, of the circuit at various times. So they call it circuit cause it's like your know, old telecom terms, but, um, you have the reliability. So you start here, let's say 60 meters or 80 meters, which is blue. 80 meters is blue, right? 80 meters is reliable. Let's say from about zero 100 and then it goes straight down at zero 900. Then you notice some um, 20 meters starts to pick up at zero 800 and it goes all the way and then it, it basically goes all day. The S meter, exactly what sort of um, S meter readings you can get at various times, right? And they have a whole bunch of other charts. The MUF maximum usable frequency, right? Um, and short path, long path. So you have the long path predictions below here. Now let's see what we try to plug in another, um, and you can zoom in too. Let me try to plug in another thing here. Yeah, what's my location again? Okay, let's say I want to do the best frequency, right? So the best frequency, and it tells you exactly, and these are kind of like the propagation charts you used to see in the, um, in the magazines as well. You know, it tells you the time in UTC, the best operating frequencies, and it tells you, you know, you could go 20 meters, um, uh, you know, at, at zero, 100, and then you go. Yeah. So, you know, right. Okay. So let's go back here now 
And let me try a different um, part of the world. It's a little tough here with this. Uh, go back here. Okay, VOCAP online. Right? And I have to go back here. VOCAP, VOACAP.com. I select my TXQTH again. Um, FN20. And I select my receive QTH. So let's do some a little harder. Let's try to... You know, if ever North Korea came on the air, I would want to know when to work them, okay? Well, that's probably never going to happen unless something major happens. So that's, you know, band by band. Right? You see, it's a lot more sparse here, right? So I look at the short path, okay? And 20 meters is kind of open. The best time, I guess, is like 0, 0700 um, on 20 meters, um, you know, and 10, uh, 10 hundred, and then beyond that, it gets, you know, iffy, but long path, if you look at long path, so because Asia is so far away, you notice that there's a lot more opportunities on long path, right? And that's because, you know, you'll have areas of ionization that better, pro that are passed through the long path that provide a better, um, path for the signal. So, yeah, you know, sometimes you work the long path and you really have to know and, and figure out, you know, that, well, you know what, um, long path might be better at certain times. Okay. Now they do have other things. I want to show you the, um, they have the coverage area maps. This is something cool. This tells you exactly when, you know, so let's say I'm at, um, well, I'm, I'm here in FN20, and then let me see here now. Let me go somewhere interesting. Let me go to um, Kuwait, because I've worked Kuwait on every band, actually. And then I see here. Okay. Um, let's see now. Coverage, is there a... Best frequency signal, SNR, PD, total. Oh, low battery. Okay. Mm, let me see here. It's supposed to be coverage area maps. I guess they consolidate it all into one. They have a propagation wheel. I try to get the, the propagation chart. They have the propagation wheel, propagation charts. Um... Let me see now. 9K, Kuwait, propagation charts, antennas. Okay, and you can set different antennas for propagation here. All right, let's, um, let's kill that off. And um, planar distance, muff map. Okay, there we go. So the muff map tells you the maximum usable frequency at any part, and it takes a while, I guess, to compute, right? And here you can see, actually, you know, you see here, like some of these parts of um, the United States, a maximum usable frequency could be quite low. And then, uh, you know, basically to this blue part here where I am, right? is, you know, local communication will, will be possible on lower bands. But when you go to different parts, like, you know, some of them almost up to 30 megahertz, that means 10 meters might be open. And then, um, let's see here. Yeah, and, you know, you generally could see the maximum usable frequency here. Now let's try something else. All right, let's try the propagation planner. Okay, so the propagation planner, let's say I was here and I want to go to, I don't know, um, Anobon Island propagation planner. And then let me see, um, planner. Okay, there we go. And it's thinking, you know, it's a cloud-based website, right? And, you know, you can, you can see zones with warp bands. Okay. Um, yeah, you know, 
<clears throat> and it tells you different parts of the world where you can see, right? So you can actually see like to different parts of the world, like, you know, to Alaska, to Newfoundland. And I believe these are CQ zones. Yeah, these are CQ zones of the world, right? So if you're chasing zones, you can see when it's best to, to actually work these, right? Like for example, um, from FN20 to um, zone 14, which is, I believe is Norway, okay? You'll see that the best propagation happens around 1200 um, on 17, but on 20 meters, it starts around 10 hundred and goes all the way up. So very interesting. Let's check um, zone 26, because I think that's like a really hard zone. Okay, yeah, zone 26 is almost non-existent. All right, so you'll see like 20 meters. Yeah, it's a tough slog all the way through. So anyway, so this is, this is one way to do it. Now, the other way you can see live propagation is I tell people to look at dxmaps.com, right? And dxmaps.com will show you actual live propagation at various um, times. So here it mostly deals with six meters and we're gonna be talking with Hayden VK7AH KD9 VK7HH KD9 SSB about um, six meter e skip. But here you notice in Europe they have transequatorial propagation between Europe and South Africa. This is based on actual cluster spots and and basically reading um, PSK Reporter and such like that to tell when you know who is making contact where. where. So this is like a real time propagation map. That's on six meters. Let's check at ten meters. Okay, the technician is going to want to get on 10. You notice, yeah, you have some, some contacts between the United States and Europe. And then you have contacts between Europe and, and South America. Oh, I see my friend CX6VM. Okay, and then um, you have people going in Israel, going to Europe. And then you have uh, Indonesia talking to Europe here, see? And then you have all the, the solar numbers here, the solar flux index. Um, you know, the A index, K index, uh, and then space weather is quiet, I guess. So, yeah, you know, so this is pretty interesting. These are, these are some uh, real-time propagation maps. So anyway, that's uh, two, uh, you know, propagation prediction. Well, one is prediction, one is a real-time readout. I hope you found this useful. If you found this useful, please like and subscribe. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Peace in 73s.